The Manhattan District Attorney is a Soros-funded prosecutor. And so he, like other Soros-funded prosecutors, they weaponize their office to impose a political agenda on society at the expense of the rule of law and public safety. I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. <laughs> I can't speak to that. This week, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis tried to find a way to attack both Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg and Donald Trump ahead of Trump's likely indictment. Some would consider this a feasible strategy for DeSantis if he decides to run against Trump in 2024, as expected. But despite Trump's momentous legal woes, he still holds a large lead over DeSantis in recent polls. And he's already raised more than 1.5 million bucks in campaign cash since claiming he would be arrested on Tuesday. Here with me on set is Dean Obidala, host of SiriusXM's The Dean Obidala Show and an MSNBC columnist. And also joining is Jennifer Horn, former New Hampshire Republican chair and senior fellow at the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. Thank you both very much for coming to the show. Dean, let me start with you and your new column that just came out this morning. You write about Trump, how Trump's rhetoric is dangerous. Tell me more. Certainly. I mean, look what he did. He began last Saturday saying protest, protest, protest. The protest didn't happen. He escalated the rhetoric. We saw him then talk about mocking the idea. They're destroying our country, and they want us to be peaceful, mocking that. Then calling Alvin Bragg an animal and a sociopath and all vile names, and then posting a picture where Donald Trump's holding a bat over Alvin Bragg's head. And it just continues. Then you have a death threat against Alvin Bragg. Donald Trump knows what he's doing. We live in a post-January 6th world. Donald Trump knows his words can lead to violence. And sadly and tragically, that's what's happening. And the GOP base and the GOP leaders won't say anything. Jim Jordan didn't even want to read the comments that Donald Trump made about destruction and death if he's charged with a crime. We need more GOP leaders to speak up. They won't. At this point, I think they're complicit, to be honest. And, you know, Jennifer, picking up, we'll respond to what Dean is saying. You know, I'm also mystified by the fact that Republican leaders won't speak up, won't say anything. Why? Right. Right. Well, because think about what they want. They want to be reelected. They want to continue to raise big money from small dollar donors. Um, and they don't want Donald Trump targeting them the way that he targets every other person who you know, come crosses his path in any way. Um, the, the GOP at this point, at when you go, you can go way before January 6th, but certainly once January 6th happened and unfolded right before our eyes on television, when the leadership in the party after that continued to embrace Donald Trump as a party leader, as a thought leader for the Republican Party. Um, that was our sign right then, that they were going to be beholden to him and owned by him for as long as he is mm. around. Um, it, it, they, they can't afford to tick off Donald Trump from their perspective, for their way of looking at it. Uh, and I think the best example of, of the degree to which Donald Trump owns the, the GOP is Kevin McCarthy. Mm -hmm. when you, he, mm -hmm wouldn't be speaker without him. And he, he didn't just sell his soul. He sold out the American people to get the votes he needed to become speaker. You, you know, Dean, um, hovering over this entire 2024 campaign is the potential indictment mm -hmm. of not just a former president, but a current candidate for the Republican nomination for president. How would an indictment change Trump's message? How would it change the people already in the race, their message? If you think Donald Trump talks about himself all the time, it would be amplified if he was indicted because everything's about him. But there's this kind of mythology out there. If Trump is charged, it makes him a stronger candidate. Maybe in the GOP, but not a general election. I can tell you what. First of all, if he's charged, he gets arraigned. So articles from then on go, Donald Trump, who's out on bail, is campaigning today in New Hampshire. <laughs> Donald Trump, who's facing five to ten years in prison, is campaigning in, in Iowa today. Secondly, Donald Trump knows it's not helpful for him. He's freaking out. And an example, though, of where he knew it, Michigan, last year, gubernatorial race, a guy named Ryan Kelly was running. He got charged with a crime for entering the premises on January 6th. No violence. Charged. Immediately, he rose to the top of the GOP candidates running, raised money. Did Donald Trump endorse him? No. He endorsed Tudor Dixon, and the GOP rallied around another candidate because they knew the guy under indictment couldn't win, and the guy came in fourth out of five candidates. So Trump better known, but even Donald Trump knows 
an indictment is an albatross around your neck. You're going to lose with it, and he's going to lose money, people. Some of the big Republican donors, they're really investors. They're not donors. Mm -hmm. Are they going to invest in a guy under indictment? I don't think so. 